Here is another question that we can practice. So for number one, see if you can pause the video and try this one yourself. They've given you a person's marks, okay? So they have a English, they had English and they had maths and they wrote five different tests. What the, And what they want to know is determine the equation of the line of best fit. What they mean by that well, is the following. If we had to go and plot these, obviously the x-axis would be English. doesn't really matter. Your y-axis would be maths. And then you would have values. So the English goes between the lowest is 40 and the highest is 70. So I'm just going to go in 10s, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60... 70 and for maths your highest is 92 and your lowest is 40 so I'll just start at 30 over here 60 70 80 okay it's not very neat but then you'd go plot the values so this one would be 70 and 41 so 70 for the English 41 for for the maths the next one would be 68 and 92 68 and 92 something like that. But you don't actually go and plot those values. I'm just trying to show you, remember how in the previous lesson we got a few dots, let's say the dots look like that. Then what we try to do is we try to put a line that goes as close to those dots. Now you work out the equation of that line on a calculator by using y equals to a plus bx. So what you need to go and do is plug all of these values into the calculator. The first row will be x, the second row will be y, and then you'll just go work out your a and your b value. So have a go at that and see if you can try it yourself without my help. So you can just pause the video and attempt to do that yourself. You would have to put your calculator into stats mode first. So I'm going to go mode and then 3. Then you go to the number 2 which says A plus BX. Then you go plug all your values in. So you'll say 70. I like to put all my X values in first. I realized on the previous videos that using this calculator it's a bit faster that way. 50. Once all the values are plugged into the calculator, you then go to, you can push on or you can push AC, but you, you can even just go to shift and then you go one, which is stat. Okay, no, that one doesn't work. So rather what you want to do is go to on, then say shift stat. You want to go to number five, which is regression, and then you get your A and B values like that. So A is going to be equal to 78.75. And then your B value you get by just going shift stat again. You don't have to redo everything. And then you get your B value. Oh, now you might think your B value is 78.75. But remember, you must push equals. There we go. And so you get negative 0.254. So now we can fill in our equation. Because we know that the equation of a line in grade 12 statistics goes A plus BX. Remember, it is on your formula sheet over here and so we found that our a value was 78.75 and our b value and our b value was a negative so it'll be negative 0.25 x and there's the equation for the line of best fit what that means is that if you plotted all your values i've got no idea what it would look like but if you had to what the calculator has now done is it's found a line that gets as close to the dots as possible so it tries to get as close to each of them as possible, and this is the equation of that line. The next thing, we need to find the correlation coefficient. Okay, so remember correlation coefficient is your R value. So that's R, so that's what we're going to find next. So remember what you can do is you just go back to shift 1, you go to 5 for regression, and now we're looking for the R value, which is 3, then you must push equals and we get negative 0.25. Okay, it's just a coincidence that these two numbers are the same. That won't always be the case. They were slightly different on the calculator, but when we rounded up, it gave us the same. Now we need to comment. Now the negative tells us that it's a, that it's a negative correlation, which means that the graph is doing that. It's got a negative gradient. But 0 0.25 is extremely weak. What that means is the values probably look something like this. Okay, it doesn't match the line at all. Remember in the previous video we said that anything above 0 0.8 is strong. If it's equal to 1, that's perfect. That's a line that literally the dots are on the line. Then anything between 0 0.5 and 0 0.8 is an average correlation. And then anything less than 0 0.5 is weak. 
That means the line doesn't match the dots at all. And then the same holds for the negatives. The negatives just mean the line's going downwards. Okay, so negative 0.25 is very, very weak. So we can say that, yeah, the, the correlation is weak. What that means is that this student, there isn't a correlation between their English marks and their maths marks. So for example, if they get 95% for their English, there's no, there's, there's not a, it doesn't mean that they're going to do well in their maths. They might, but statistically, there's no relationship between their English and their maths. Whereas if their R value was like 0 0.95, that would mean that there is a very strong relationship between their English marks and their maths marks. And so you could be fairly confident that if they do well in their English, they will do well in their maths. But this, in this scenario, it doesn't work. And, and it makes sense. I mean, if the, the, in the test one, they got 70% for English, but only 41 for maths. Then for, on test four, they got 90% for English, but then only 50% for maths. Then on test two, they got 92% for maths, but only 68. You see, so there isn't really a clear relationship happening over here. And that's why the R value is so small. And so you wouldn't use, you wouldn't want to use this equation to try and predict anything. For example, if you know that she get, he or she gets 70% for, or like 60% for English, you don't want to use this equation to try to work out the maths mark. Why? Because this equation doesn't match the dots very nicely. However, if the R value was super high, like 0 0.9, then you could be quite confident and you could use that formula to predict things.